Hey guys, Rexy here, and in today's video, we're going to be covering one of the biggest mysteries of FNAF Security Breach Ruin. That mystery? Glam Rock Freddy. Now, with all these theories popping up all over the internet, it's hard to decipher what is actually true about our beloved protagonist's timeline. But one thing is for certain, something absolutely terrible has happened to everyone's favorite animatronic. Besides Thank Roxanne, you. of course. So let's go ahead and jump into the madness, and what better place to start than the ending of Security Breach? Now, obviously, there are six endings in total at the end of Security Breach, but I will say we're going to bring on Daco a little bit later in today's video, and he's going to debunk exactly which ending he thinks is canon. And what he says will probably shock you the way it did me, because I literally thought it was a completely different ending than what he thinks is true. So that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the first ending that could somewhat make sense on Glamrock Freddy's timeline. That ending being the one that I like to call the disassembled Glamrock Freddy ending. Now, if you remember, this is the ending where you decide to stay and come up with this master plan along with Glamrock Freddy that you're going to sneak up on Vanny's secret hideout over in the Fazer Blaster and in the words of Glamrock Freddy, end this. Now, obviously, this ending doesn't go according to plan, at least not for Glamrock Freddy and Gregory. Glamrock Freddy walks in and gets absolutely demolished by a couple of help bots, which ends up being the least epic battle I've ever seen in any video game, not just FNAF. Vanny screams out, disassemble Freddy, and he gets pushed off the bridge in the Fazer Blaster and torn to smithereens by the evil help bots. Fast forward a little bit and somehow, some way, Glamrock Freddy has just enough signal and life in his body to tell Gregory to get up to the Fazer Blast booth and turn the bots against Vanny. And of course, Karma strikes, a rip Vanny to smithereens, but it was just a little too late for our protagonist, Glamrock Freddy. As you can see on the screen, when Gregory does eventually reach our beloved bear, Glamrock Freddy is just really, really in some bad shape. And his stomach does look somewhat similar to what we see in FNAF Ruin. So now let's do a little bit of a deeper dive. Does this ending actually make sense to where Glamrock Freddy could potentially have left off in the end of FNAF Security Breach and where it picks up in FNAF Ruin? Now I will say there is a couple things that go for it. For one, the pizzeria does get shut down for health concerns leaving it somewhat abandoned. And I mean, Glamrock Freddy's stomach does look absolutely horrible. The big issue that I have with this ending, however, is that Glamrock Freddy still has his head, which we know after playing the Ruin DLC that that just cannot be possible. However, you could make the case that something has happened in between the end of Security Breach and Ruin itself. I guess there is the possibility that an animatronic or an help bot could have maybe kicked off his head or did something horrible to him, maybe out of spite, but it seems a little unlikely. So at least for now, we are going to go ahead and say that this is not what happened to Glamrock Freddy. So now let's talk about what I believe is the true ending of FNAF Security Breach and probably the best bet for how Glamrock Freddy is left off on the timeline. That ending being what I like to call the burn trap true ending. Of course, this is the ending where alongside our beloved companion Glamrock Freddy, we destroy burn trap and he gets sucked in by the blob. Now, what makes this ending really unique to me is that Glamrock Freddy and Gregory do escape as the building begins to burn down into dust and rubble, leaving them happily ever after on a hill sitting together watching the sun either rise or set, but I guess it doesn't matter because it's a good ending. Now, how does this have any relation to where we end up finding Glamrock Freddy in the Pizza Plex in FNAF Ruin? Because any sane person would say that this ending could not possibly have happened because Glamrock Freddy is still left behind in the Fazer Blaster. However, after doing a little bit of research and talking to a couple YouTubers, you will notice that the Glamrock Freddy that is found in Fazer Blaster has prototype written on his foot. Now, Daco made a very good point after we talked, and he let me know that this was added after the game had been released, because in the initial trailer, this word prototype did not exist on the foot of Glamrock Freddy. Now, why did Steel Wool decide to add it in the initial game? Now, I do have a couple theories on this, and one of them being that I believe Steel Wool may have wanted us to think 
that the disassembled Freddy version of the game's ending could have potentially happened, which of course sparks mystery and theories just like this video here. It also makes a little bit of sense if you watch my video before this, that the Mimic might have taken over a prototype version of Glamrock Freddy, most likely to confuse Cassie in all honesty because she does have a good relationship with the animatronics. However, she realizes very quickly that that is not the case, especially when the Glamrock Freddy that she sees looks like the Headless Horseman and begins chasing her throughout the Phaser Blast. Now, while we're on this topic, I do want to point out the fact that she cannot see Glamrock Freddy when she puts on the Vanny Mask, which is really weird because she was able to see all of the other animatronics, at least their outline. That is, however, until I recalled the rooftop ending of Security Breach. When Glamrock Freddy gets to the roof and says, Vanny, I can see you now. I have new eyes. Somewhat of a cool callback and just something I really just wanted to point out. Another thing that makes sense about this ending is that Gregory might not be in the building after all. As we know now, the Mimic used Gregory's voice to learn Cassie into the building in order to destroy the security protocol and release him. Thus being the reason why I do think this is the true ending of the game and uh, in my opinion makes the most sense because Gregory is able to communicate with Cassie outside of the building and our beloved bear is still alive. At least I really want this to be true because I don't want to see my boy Glamrock Freddy go down. Anyways guys, that brings me to my third and final ending that we're going to be covering in today's video, and the one that Daco thinks makes the most sense. This ending being of course, the Princess Quest ending. Now if you recall, this is the ending where you beat all of the Princess Quests around the building, and the last one being inside of Vanny's office. Now towards the end of Princess Quest 3, you see the character gets up to this glitched wall, breaks it, and goes through. And there's a scream in the background. The screen goes black and then error pops up on the machine. And it shows all of the help bots going from evil back to normal, as well as Vanny's mask being thrown off on the floor in the Phaser Blast room. The next scene shows Gregory holding a duffel bag with of course our beloved Glamrock Freddy's head inside of it. And then Vanessa coming from the exit and running into Gregory, no longer under the spell of glitch trap, and now back to her normal self as well. Now, of course, this ending ends with Gregory, Vanessa, and Clamrock Freddy's head sitting on a beautiful green pasture, eating some ice cream and looking at the sunset. Now, how exactly did this play in to the FNAF Ruin timeline? Well, that's where I'm gonna go ahead and bring Daco in to do a little bit more explaining. All right, Daco, so why do you think that Princess Quest is the true canon ending? There's a lot of hints throughout Ruin that indicate that Princess Quest is canon. Uh, the first biggest one is all of the drawings from Gregory that you collect throughout the game. Each drawing is every single ending in Security Breach apart from Princess Quest. So why is there not a Princess Quest drawing? because that one actually happened and the other ones are not canon anymore. Steerwall did this to obviously show that Princess Quest is the canon ending. Not only that, when you go to Phaser Blast, you see the Princess Quest machine, the last one, and you can see that the sword from Princess Quest is impaled through the machine, which again indicates that the Princess Quest ending did happen, uh, Glitch Trap was defeated, and the sword's there, you know, to indicate that. I think that's pretty obvious to me. No, so Glitch Trap gets destroyed completely in Princess Quest. Um, there's no sign of him throughout the games. MXES is a completely separate character entity that was created um, as a security protocol uh, to keep the Mimic at bay, to keep the Mimic uh, sealed up with the concrete um, and to stop anybody um from breaking all of the security nodes to let the mimic free if you're wondering how M mxes was created it was actually created by vanessa and gregory right so you're um, telling me that a seven-year-old made this program yeah so in in the books and stuff it's and in the games as well uh, in the cds that you collect in security breach uh, it's well known that gregory is a, a good hacker 
Um, in in the books, he, 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 he in the books he's good at hacking the animatronics and stuff. Um, so it's com it's already confirmed that Gregory knows what he's doing with this. Um, Vanessa as well. Uh, you know, she's she's an adult, so both of them combined. You know, I feel like they would do something like that. Um, we know as well that it's true, um, because when you go down to where the mimic is, Gregory's backpack is there on the floor. So we know that Gregory has been there with Vanessa uh, to stop the mimic oh, in dang. the past. That's a good point. I actually didn't even realize that. I mean, I saw yeah, the book so, bag, but I didn't really no, put the, two the and two together. The, the backpack if you look closely, actually has uh, Gregory's name tag on it. Dang. It has Gregory on it. I can se I'll can send it you after, so you've got it on the video. Um, but yeah, there's Gregory's name tag's there. So it's confirmed that Gregory's, Gregory's been down there. Wow, that's actually pretty impressive that you realize that. Okay, so my last question to you, because this is what the whole video is about, is how do you think... Glamrock Freddy ended from security breach and ended up the way he was in Ruin. I mean, I guess it okay. makes sense with your ending because, I mean, his head is missing. Yeah. Um, his head's missing and his chest has been ripped up by the help bots. Um, it's the cutscene in security breach where Vanessa presses the button and says disassemble Freddy. That happens before the princess quest ending. Um, so Freddy gets disassembled and then you get chased by Vanny. You go up to Vanny's hideout. Play Princess Quest 3, and then you know you get the Princess Quest ending. So that explains why Freddy's got no head. It explains why his chest has been ripped up. Um, because Princess Quest ending, you see Freddy's head at the end. Um, so yeah, to me that's pretty obvious. The only issue now that is confusing people is why Steerwall decided to add the prototype on Freddy's foot. Um, it, it, it's a hard one and I, I don't understand why they did that uh, because now people are saying that the Freddy that was in Ruin is not the same Glamrock Freddy in Security Breach but they are, they are so similar you know they've got they both got no head the chest has been ripped up the, you know the, the, the bodies are both where uh, Fuzzerblast is you know where Freddy gets disassembled is the same place where you see him in Ruin it's the same location it's the same area it's they're both in Fuzzer Blast. So to me, that is the same Glamrock Freddy. Um, and I, I really don't understand why Steelwall decided to add the prototype foot. Uh, maybe that's going to be explained later on or something. Well, probably it, for it people very... like me, because that actually makes me really sad to think our boy Freddy got torn to pieces like that. I mean, I guess we know he got torn to pieces, but I still had some hope that he might have made it out of the building. Um, similar to like that scrapped Freddy. Do you remember which one I'm talking about? The one where like he was all ripped up to pieces, but he still had a head. Mm. Oh, you <clears throat> you mean the ending where he just dies? Yeah, where he just dies, and then he um, it's the ending where you go up and you disassemble Vanny. Yeah, uh, well, that's 100% not canon because Vanessa's, <laughs> Vanessa's in the ending of this uh, in Ruin, so um, that can't, that's definitely not true. The fact that um, all of the other endings have been drawn by Gregory, that, you know, apart from Princess Quest, you know, it, to me, it's just 1 million percent obvious that the Princess Quest ending's canon. Um, and to people who are saying that the, it could be the Afton ending, it can't be um, because. At the end of the Afton ending, the pizza simulator location, the pizza place, gets completely destroyed and blown up. How can that happen if we go back there in ruin with Cassie? And when we go into the pizza place location, it's still intact. Everything's still there. You know, the the office is still there, and all the, you know, where we where we fight Burn Trap. You know, right. it, it's it's all intact still. So and yeah, like we talked about earlier, I mean, that's the one that I thought was the true canon ending and I really wanted it to be true only because, I mean, it ended so happily. It ended up on that nice green hill just staring off into the sunset and both of them were yeah. alive and escaped. But yeah, you make a good point. There's no way what Pizza Plex would Cassie have gone into. Yeah. Well, especially at the end, like you said, yeah, the whole burn trap area is intact, which... Yeah. They make that very clear in this game when Cassie says something along the lines of, what are all these burners for or something like that? It's like yeah, an exactly. oven. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, almost like they wanted us to be able to tell 
that that was not yes. the ending. Yeah, so they, you know, that location would not be intact still if the Afton ending was canon, because you, you saw at the end the, the the whole place starts setting on fire and exploding. So, yep. Well, I guess before I let you go, I have one more question for you, and it's, where do you think Gregory is then? Was he inside the pizza plex when Cassie got there, or did he make it out with Vanessa, like in the ending that you, uh, yeah, you said is yeah, true? he might. Yeah, yeah, he might. Uh, Princess Quest ending, he makes it out with Vanessa. Um, you know, glitch traps destroyed. Vanny's set free. Uh, Vanny drops her mask. You know, she's she's not possessed by a glitch trap anymore. And then they they leave the location. Um, they obviously go back though in the future to deal with the mimic. Um, you know, it's explained. You know, Gregory's backpack's in there. Uh, Gregory knows all about the mimic. Um, when he finally gets back in contact with us, he knows who the Mimic is. He knows that um, Cassie's been tricked by the Mimic because, uh, you know, the Mimic's pretended to be Gregory. It, ma it makes sense to me, the whole plot point with the Mimic. The, mimics, the Mimic starts mimicking Gregory because, you know, Gregory's the one who sealed him up with Vanessa. And, you know, and you, you can see at the end with the elevator, um, Gr Gregory's terrified of the Mimic because... You know, that that's why they sealed him in the first place, because they know how dangerous he is. And now that the Mimic's free, because he tricked... Vene uh, because the Mimic tricked Cassie, uh, you know, Gregory has to, you know, make that sacrifice of... Well, we don't know fully yet if that was Gregory who cut the elevator. <laughs> but, you know, it kind of makes sense, because Gregory knows how dangerous the Mimic is. And, and knows that the mimic is going to hunt him down now for revenge for sealing for sealing him up. Yeah, I mean sometimes um, you just have to kill yeah. your best friend to, to do right <laughs> well, by the rest of the world, huh? Again, that one's a tricky one. We don't know if that was the mimic talking at the end or Gregory. We don't know yet um, if it's one hundred percent true either way. Um, but yeah, Gregory wasn't in the pizza plex at the time when Cassie was there. That was all the mimic. The Mimic was pretending to be Gregory that whole time, um, you know, to lure Cassie in, to set him free, which eventually do, is what happens. Um, but Gregory does find out uh, there's parts in the game where it is actually Gregory talking. There's a specific staff bot uh, that's saying, Cassie, are you there? Cassie, it's me, Gregory. That is actually Gregory trying to get in contact with uh, Cassie to, to warn Cassie about what's going on. Uh, unfortunately, um, Gregory doesn't get the chance to do that until the end uh, when the Mimic's set free. It's too late. Wow. Well, just for the record, if uh, we ever end up in this situation and you're stuck on an elevator, uh, <laughs> just know I wouldn't cut the line. I would have you get oh. out with the Mimic or not. Uh, but thank yeah, you. thank you, Daco. I appreciate you taking the time to jump on the video. Uh, it means a lot to me. And uh, are you planning on doing your own breakdown? Yeah, so um, I'm I'm gonna do what you've done as well. So you know you did a, a, a summary about the mimic. Um, I'll be doing something similar, explaining in, explaining what 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 happened with the mimic uh, from the books and stuff, and um, what Gregory and Vanessa did afterwards and stuff. So yeah. All right. Well, guys, make sure you check out Daco's videos because of course they're gonna be great. And uh, thanks again. No problem. So there you have it, guys. Big shout out to Daco for jumping on this video. It really means a lot to me. And of course, thank you all for all the love and support. The first video is doing absolutely insane, but if for every reason you did happen to miss the Mimic story explained, definitely check it out. It was a great video and I'm really proud of that one. But without further ado, I cannot thank you guys enough for all the love and support. It's been absolutely insane. And if you're new to the channel, I definitely recommend you hit that subscribe button and turn on those bell notifications because we are the next big up and coming FNAF channel and I do not want you to miss a single thing. And if you made it this far in the video, maybe check out one of my other ones. I think you guys would really enjoy it. Anyways, until next time, peace out!